So, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, we are going to talk about secure messengers this morning uh, and how they could be used uh, as a cool spear phishing uh, vector. So, I'm really glad to, uh, that we can have Laureline uh, here this morning. Hi. We are both from uh, French speaking Switzerland, and yeah, I'll let you present yourself. So, I am Laureline. And uh, I'm a freelance consultant, which means I'm open to job offers. <laughs> and I recently graduated HIGVD in, well, security. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so about myself, I uh, used to be a developer, coder of security solutions. Uh, I'm now co-chapter leader of OWASP Geneva. Uh, really like threat modeling. Not everybody is perfect. Uh, I work for my own company, which means, well, I can say what I want, so that's cool. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter. Okay. Uh, so, well, you know, all those secure messengers, like two years ago, uh, especially with Signal, they all switched to end-to-end -end encryption. That was really, really great first around that, which is really good because it means that pri privacy has become a requirement. Uh, so it's really for the end users, that's really, really nice progress. Uh, and yeah, except for governments because they started to say, well, that's really bad because you know, terrorists, we don't see the message, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but what it means for, uh, let's say, general population, uh, you can feel that, well, even if governments say uh, that they need backdoors because otherwise they can't read those messages and all that, it should be really, really super secure. Uh, and if you have a look at the crypto, it really looks super secure. Some diagram here, of course, we won't go in detail and we won't try to attack that. I'm not crazy. Uh, so yeah, the crypto is really good. Uh, but maybe when you use a Telegram, Signal, WhatsApp, you could have you ask yourself, but you know, you don't create any login, any password or whatever, so how do those apps authenticate myself? Uh, well, somehow you just have a provisioning done by SMS, you type like four digit or six digit code, and then that's it. And then it's somehow linked to your device or phone number you don't know well. But the other important point is, how does it authenticate the people you are talking to? Well, somehow it gets a contact automatically from the address book and then that's it. You don't have to manage explicitly your contacts, except for some apps. But the most common one, yeah, just insert the app, enter an SMS code and then that's it. Which seems a bit light when you see all this crypto, but at the same time, yeah, everything is transparent to the end user, so maybe there's something missing. Well, I told you I like threat modeling, so I'll try to do a simple diagram there. Uh, so when we are talking about secure messengers, what you have in practice, this is really oversimplified, uh, but this, is, this should be enough to understand what's happening. So here, you have the messaging backend, so mostly in the cloud. Uh, you exchange messages, with the app, all that is super secured with end-to-end -end encryption. Okay, sometimes you have backups, there are questions around backups, uh, which we won't discuss today. And the first time, yeah, you have this SMS init code that's sent, and basically it's just uh, to more spam protection to be sure that people are not creating too many fake accounts or whatever. There has been proven attacks, via this SMS provisioning, uh, SS7, things like that. So yeah, really SMS is crap, and especially for, for that case. Then if we have a deeper dive on uh, the mobile OS, uh, what you are well, whether if it's uh, iOS or Android, you have really good sandboxing. So clearly on a mobile OS, you have a better security than on a standard OS because every application would be sandbox running with restricted permission and all that. So what I try to show here that you have your messaging app and it's leaving it in its sandbox and then that's it and it cannot 
normally discuss with other applications. What's shared is somehow a view of the network and the storage. But what you see here, those two apps, well, contacts is a shared storage space for them. So both of them can read and write. Uh, and it's super easy for that. Uh, there's an API because, you know, some apps need to, like, manage contacts and do stuff and calendar reminders and all that. So for Android, super easy. Well, Laurelin, we maybe will tell easy. you in detail. Yeah. If you find the correct documentation. And if the documentation is up to date, it's super easy. So a few lines of Java code for Android, and then you just need to ask for the read and or write contacts, and then that's it. Uh, and so clearly for me, I say, well, when I look at it, I say, hmm, there may be some room for a, for a side channel attack. Uh, and what's really important for what we are going to discuss, we don't need a rooted device for that. So we are not talking about malware. We, will, we won't be talking about malware. We won't be talking about an app running with full privileges. It's just any app as long as it uses this API, can read and write th those contacts info. So, uh, what I did, well, first I did some basic tests myself, and I say, oh, uh, okay, suppose I uh, have someone called Bob, uh, there is someone in his address book that's called Alice, and this is a real Alice, and what happens if I create another contact with another phone number, but I call, I, I name it white space Alice. What happens? Well, just from the notification, it's hard to find a difference. So this is WhatsApp, and well, what will happen? You will see two different conversations, but both of them seems to come from Alice. Uh, and if you just follow this pump, okay, this can be misleading. Yeah, Telegram. Same stuff, of course. Signal, same stuff. Well, I can do a clean screenshot because you can do screenshot on the Android version. Yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, this, 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 this is bad somehow because, you know, for an end user, making a difference between that and that, if you are not cautious, uh, and if you click on the conversation, yeah, well, you just get the message. So this one is approved by default. This one seems real, and you don't get any warnings or any pop-up that say, hey, maybe there has been a crypto change or whatever. Uh, so why does this stupid trick work? Well, uh, for me, yeah, well, there is a poor design solution. You shouldn't trust by default uh, those phone numbers, but they need to do that for usability. Okay, for me, what's really a bad choice is, yeah, they are using tofu. Yeah, you know, it's hipster, tofu, all that. Yeah, well, in practice here, it means trust on, fir on first use. So they didn't do like, when, you know, when you connect your SSH, you get those prompts that say, hey, this is the first time, do you trust this key or whatever? They say, hmm, you know, we are competing with apps from Facebook or whatever. We don't want to annoy the end user. So first time, we don't display anything, and then we keep the key, and if the key changes later on, we, 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 we will show pop-ups and warning signs and whatever. But at the first time, a contact is sending a message, yeah, don't bother the end user with that, uh, which is a really bad choice. And then what, you, what we do, well, we just, then we use the same trick that, you know, spend Unicode characters in URL and all that. So just take the hacks from the web 10 years ago and then play with that and do it uh, in the mobile era and then you get something working. And really for me, what's missing here, uh, you see the answers of the vendors afterward. Really, they don't put the end user and the mobile app in the threat model. What they care, they want to protect the back end, they want to protect the network connection because they want to protect from NSA. So somehow they say, yeah, if, well, I, I won't say if NSA is spying. N NSA is spying all the fiber connection and all that. So they don't want NSA from those 
fiber dumps to be able to see those messages. And they also don't want, if I come back here, they also don't want NSA to go and take the servers and find interesting stuff in them. So here they say, well, we don't have any keys, we can't do anything, message us for encrypted end to end, we can't do it, anything with that. So somehow, they just care about this part. But the, the end user, the mobile, is totally forgotten, is totally out of, uh, of the threat model. So which means that, well, well first, there is space for a, for a side channel attack. And it's something that's interesting. Uh, you have a paper published by uh, Academia that shows, uh, well, why signal protocol is uh, secure, is formally secure from a mathematical point of view. So guys from Academia uh, did uh, stuff like that. Uh, like 20 pages with math all around and all that, the conclusion is that, yeah, the protocol is super secure and all that. Uh, but, like, after five pages, you, you can read some assumptions. And what it says, when it's written signal, it's not signal the application, it's signal the protocol. And this is ambiguous, and you will see that this is, yeah, where bad thing is. So what he says, signal specify a, man a mandatory method for participants to verify each other identity keys through an out of band channel. Maybe this is SMS, but SMS is just when you install, it's not when you discuss for the first time with a new contact. But most implementations do not require such verification before me messaging can occur. So really, so for me, Okay, this paper is good, we know the math and the crypto is good, but the implementation is bad because they don't do that. So basically, uh, they have a secure protocol, but they know that they built the application without the assumptions to have this formal security. So uh, there's room for exploitation. Uh, and there's something also cool, which we will see uh, we will be using. Uh, those messengers, they've decided, I don't know, for whatever reason, they also, they store their own identifiers in the contacts. Uh, and you saw that the, those contacts are shared by all applications, so somehow, from whatever application, you can see if the user has WhatsApp, Telegram, or Signal installed. Something which you shouldn't be able to, because your, uh, your app is sandbox and you should not see what's happening around. So somehow it's already leaking data. So I won't go in detail in this scenario, but uh, I, I was giving a talk uh, some time ago at DEFCON Crypto Village and I saw how it could be used in theory to set up a man in the middle attacks because of that. Uh, we will sh demonstrate to you another use case which is uh, easier to follow and quicker, but somehow how it works. So yeah, let's suppose, uh, and you will see what Laurelin has done. I create some stupid social game that has access to contacts. Uh, and then I'm able to convince Alice and Bob to install this game. This game has some hidden features that send all the contact data to a malicious server. And from this malicious server, I can create fake white space Alice and fake white space Bob contacts. And then I can go through my evil number, forward all the messages, and I see everything. Just Alice and Bob are talking to each other, but via a third party, and they, they don't see it. Uh, which is really bad because, yeah, well, they are using end-to-end -end encryption, but they are not talking to the good person, and they can't notice it. So for me, this, this, this is somehow worrying. So I say, okay, I feel it's bad, but Let's try to put like some really simple methodology on it and say, okay, I do really, really like to security assessment where I say somehow for me the risk is, uh, let's say, how difficult is the attack to set up and what's the user impact. To set up such an attack, and you will see what Laurelin has done, uh, my conclusion was, well, from a technical point of view, it's easy. Well, you have code, you have APIs, and you are supposed to have documentation how to use 
those API to have access to uh, contacts and for me it was okay. Getting the social game approved on Play Store should be easy because you are not trying to hide my malware features or whatever. You are just a game that contacts a web server via HTTPS just to have some, to sync some social data to be able to play with it. So shouldn't be an issue. From a logistic point of view, I say, okay, a uh, bit more difficult to set up. Well, what's good is you just need one phone number if you want to attack thousands of users and all conversations will go to one account, so this is cheap. Uh, but the only point is, yeah, well, somehow you need to convince users to install this stupid game. Sorry. Uh, but now, let's say, uh, it, it was somehow funny because uh, when I, I saw that at, at Vegas, I had one guy from a big Chinese manufacturer, you know, one of the big Chinese manufacturer of smartphones, uh, who somehow, you know, they shared data with Facebook and all that. And he had many, many questions after the talk, two hours of question. And he said, you know, we're working at this company, he gave me his card, and uh, we are trying to add applications to give more value to our phone. So, well, somehow he was just trying to find some good excuse to steal data, and uh, at one point his question was, eh, does it work with WeChat? <laughs> Can we also spy users on, on, on WeChat with it? And then, yeah, well, of course, I stopped talking with him, and, uh, and that was it. So. For me, I was somehow convinced that this can have a, a real impact because, yeah, well, you can spy thousands of users with those three popular messaging gaps and it could work. So for me, in the end, the risk was high. So I contacted the vendors. Uh, Telegram, yeah, well, they have some security email address. They never answer. Even if, even if you tweet, you do whatever, they just don't care. I wasn't surprised about Telegram, but that's it. Okay, so WhatsApp. Being bought by Facebook, so somehow you use a security process of Facebook, which somehow works well. You create a ticket and then you, you get some feedback, but I was disappointed by the feedback, and the feedback was basically, yeah, well, you know, if you have malware, it's game over, so we don't care, and you know, well, the WhatsApp conversation, uh, were properly bound to the phone number. So, well, that's okay for us. We don't care if users get tricked. Uh, we did our job. Phone number A was conversation A. That's fine. End of it. So we won't make any change. And please let me know if you feel, if we think we've misunderstood something. So I tried to explain them. Uh, they didn't answer. Then send them the slides from DEFCON. They didn't answer again. So yeah. I was starting to get pissed off, but it was just the first part. Then I wanted to have feedback from Signal because it's really maybe the application where you say, well, this one is really super secure and they build a protocol and they should really care about privacy because it's, well, it's their DNA. Uh, so they have some support form. I couldn't have any answer. So I started tweeting, got some answers first. And at some point, Moxie, uh, answer me, so well, I say, yeah, that's cool, so they really care. So his answer was, yeah, you know, there are, well, he didn't read, in fact, my uh, description of the issue, he said, yeah, you have safety numbers. You know safety numbers, it's a uh, totally different use case. You are discussing with the same contact, but this contact is changing his mobile, his phone, and because he's changing his smartphone, he gets another key, so the other user gets a notification that say, hey, well, you know, something, something strange happening, you, sh you should uh, redo the pairing or whatever. But this is for same user, different smartphone. Here we are talking same smartphone, different users, but that looks to be the same user. So I tried to explain again to Moxie, and here was his answer. Yeah, well, Signal is not designed to protect your device against malware. Thanks for getting in touch. Good luck with everything. Which means, yeah, for me it was uh, F something. <laughs> I, I, I was really, really pissed off. And, uh, well, look, luckily, well, you know, uh, I need to do some consulting job and uh, I can't spend uh, several weeks working on the tool and all that because somehow I need to pay my rent. But luckily, 
I was giving security courses at a engineer school in, uh, in French speaking Switzerland where they have a really good security courses. And so I say, okay, yeah, maybe this could make a, a nice internship topic. And I was lucky because Laureline accepted the challenge and she did it. And so the goal is to show you that, yeah, what happens in real life and maybe people change their minds. One, two, okay, works. Yeah, so grad students are cheap and really efficient, turns out. So, uh, I implemented a, a small like rock, paper, scissors game. Uh, on, it's avail available on the Play Store. You can download it. Do it, please. <laughs> uh, it's been there since like July 2017 when I first did the demo for like getting my grade. And nothing happened. It's still there. I keep, I even pushed update like two days ago. And, um, yeah, the biggest challenge was the contacts API because the documentation is bad. Uh, the TNC server is like Django app, like easy mode. And, well, let's do a demo. Because, yes, thank you. Uh, Firefox. So you can see the store page. It's beautiful, isn't it? Like, I'm an artist. So, uh, we have two VMs, one, two, and I guess which is which. And we're gonna install the app. Yep. Oh, I can, I, I can watch this screen. Okay. You can, no, this is the, I pick a, a really meaningful company name because it's easy to search for. So install the app on the on the gullible user. Ah, it's faster. It's verified by PlayProtect, by the way, so it's totally safe. Don't worry, no problems. So look at the contact book. We have like Angel and Mr. Donald Trump, and like he has only one phone number. For sure, right? Uh, so we're gonna play a game of rock, paper, scissors. Do you allow? Well, of course I do. I want to play with my friends. So if you want to try the game, um, do it on your own time because it's like, it's really easy. There's even a, an AI, like, okay, you install the app. Then I'm gonna go on my awesome control panel and boom, it's there. So, you get everything, you know, who's using the app and everything, like, I basically married the, the payload and the game because it was easier. Everything you need, click this button, say, oh, well, duplicate Donald Trump and link it to evil. Do it, wait a second, then go back and Mr. Evil is gonna go, oh, Hello there. Send it. No, I said send it. And, oh, it's a message from Donald Trump. It doesn't say anything bad. Oh, it's encrypted. Good. But wait, it's not the right one. <laughs> and so, it does a thing. Contacts are confused, but when you have like, a huge address book, it doesn't matter because, like, I need to sort mine, it has like 200 entries. And WhatsApp gets confused. You can, you can talk. Yeah. It's okay. And everything works fine. But you're not talking to the right person. Ta da! Okay, so now, well, you, you can imagine lots of scenarios, uh, but th there's something special because of end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, well, they can't see, by definition, they can't see any of your message on the back end. So now we send nice messages here. Uh, 
Now let's suppose uh, I'm sending a malicious HTTP link, a signal, WhatsApp, whatever. They can't do any like spam detection, filtering, or whatever on their backend because they don't have a clue what's inside the message. So now let's suppose uh, you've convinced a CEO to install this program because he has nothing to do during the day or during meetings or whatever. He installs this program and then, yeah, and you, control, you, own, you own then his contacts via our CNC server. You see all the users with their name and one of them you figure out that it's like the CFO. You decide to clone it, to clone the CFO contact. And then what? You, have, you can have the CEO receiving some malicious link just coming from the CFO. Yeah, it's really, really highly likely uh, because you know it's coming from secure messenger and all that, that he will click. And you know that nowadays more and more people are having those desktop versions of uh, mobile messenger. So uh, we are really convinced that it's, you have a really good success if you try to do spear phishing with that because it really seems to come from someone you know and it comes via a super secure channel. So it's highly likely that people will, will click on it and rather than you can do phishing, you can do downloading malware and all that. Uh, if there are any volunteers, if there have been people crazy enough to install this application, we can discuss afterward and you can see live that, that it's working. I'll, uh, wi I'll wipe the database tonight, don't worry. Yeah, and well, you know, well, GDPR, yeah? It's compliant, don't worry. Yeah. We'll wipe all the data after the demo, for sure. Uh, so it's open source. You can just go on GitHub. It's there. I, I just need to push like the last update. But yeah, so yeah, you saw the answers of the vendors. So now our answer is, yeah, well. We can do it. You can do it too. Play with it, share it, use it responsibly. But please, yeah. Sp spread the word. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. So nowadays, yeah, well, it's just a social game, but now let's imagine, yeah, maybe, yeah. Let's suppose you're the NSA and you want to start massively spying on those users. Well, you just have to go and see the editors of Pokemon of whatever game. They just add this module. They don't have even to code anything. Thank you, Laurelyn, they will save money. Uh, add that, ask Pokemon to put that in their app. It will just be an upgrade. You, you see, uh, Google says, yeah, you know, we are scanning apps for malware and whatever. Yeah, for sure, they would never detect that because it's just standard behavior. It's just pure Java. It's calling documented and public APIs, so they cannot catch it. What's done with the backend? Well, it's legitimate because we didn't show you that you can really play work, paper, scissors with it, but you can have fun with that. So it's normal that we have a backend server because we need to sync data be between endpoints. So could be really easy for massive spying. So I'm a bit concerned by that and I really was disappointed by the answers of vendors. So yeah. Well, the, the, the actual like malicious part of it is maybe 20 lines of code. The rest is just required to make the game work. So it's like really small to find and it looks like legitimate code, so. Okay, so, and, but what can we do about that? You say, well, it's somehow side channel slash social engineering slash bad crypto choices or whatever. So for end users, well, you know, they say, hey, well, you shouldn't install crap, of course. Uh, but as we just tell, yeah, maybe they would hide this extra feature in a popular app for espionage or whatever. Uh, and say, yeah, well, you should not give access to your contacts to any application. But you know, it's a social game. By definition, you can play with friends, so you need to have access to your contacts. And people are used to giving access to those contacts because, well, so secure messenger asks for that. So now people are used to accepting and sharing access to contacts. So I don't think we can put the burden on the end user. 
then we can say, yeah, maybe when they design those mobile uh, operating systems, they miss something. So they put really good sandboxing, uh, you know, to jailbreak a device, uh, uh, iPhone, it's complex, Android, you need to find exploit for that. So somehow they did a, a good job for application, but somehow they let access to contacts totally open. So you could say, okay, maybe they could add features to sandbox access to contact, which will for sure break all current uh, integration. So maybe Apple at some point is able to do it, and they will say, well, developers now, next uh, next iOS version, you don't have this API and you need to do something else, and if you're not approved, you're removed, okay. For Android, for sure, they won't be able to fix it because there is such a huge legacy. Uh, maybe what they could do, uh, they could be a bit more strict when you are writing data uh, in the address book. So let's say what Laureline has shown when she duplicated Donald Trump, she somehow created a contact under WhatsApp ID, but it's not owned by WhatsApp, it's owned by this game. So somehow, maybe they could say, okay, when you have, maybe you have read permission, but when you have write permission, you have more control on what can you write and under which name, under which control. Pro but pro probably they're just showing a prompt like, this application is about to write in your contacts because I do it in the background. So it's invisible to users. If there was like a huge text box saying, this is going to write to your contacts, probably breaks the flow of the app. So it won't be easy, but yeah, for sure, mobile OS could improve on that because yeah, it's just... You, you have this big hole in the middle of something that's really well secure, so, so somehow it's a shame. But for me, it's really a job that has to be addressed by secure messengers because, you know, in secure messengers, you have secure. So at some point, it means because they should care about the security of end users. And even when I see the answers of those vendors, it was, hey, I did my job, you know, I implemented the specs, fine with it, and then that's, that's over. Uh, I'm, I dig a little more in Signal because I was really upset. Uh, and what I saw is like, well, all these protocols, the implementation is super clean or whatever, but for the mobile app, you see that it's really not the same, or let, let's say it politely, the same level of expertise for those developers of mobile apps. You don't even have a consistent experience between the iOS Signal app and the Android Signal app. Uh, one sh shows you the, uh, uh, the phone number each time, the other one doesn't. With one, you can't make screenshots, with the other one, you can. You see that it's, uh, it's a bit a mess, and you clearly see that they don't really care much about the UI. For them, it's like, ah, you know, it's just UI, so yeah, let's just outsource it, and it's, uh, yeah, ah, don't touch with it. It's, it should be easy, simple, there's no crypto in it, so yeah, well, don't, don't lose any time playing with that. Which means that all the user experience part is out of the loop, which is something you absolutely need if you want to design a secure system. For me, it means it should be secure for the end users. And when we talk about end-to-end, -end, well, they're just talking about from mobile to backend. For me, what, what I expect for something that's end-to-end -end is starting from the human user. Uh, so what they could do, well, either do it the old way, some apps are doing so, well, but you have to add your contacts manually, and then with that, you can't get spoofed, because you add by yourself, like, you know, all Skype and all that, you have to trust people one by one, add them, find them by their login or whatever. So this is not convenient, but in this case, it's more secure. Or so, something which I discussed with the vendors, which should take them like maybe 15 minutes to implement. Okay, that's something we discussed about Tofu. Say, okay, this is bad. The first, you, the first time you start a conversation with a new phone number, a key is exchanged and the user is not aware of that. So what I say, really from a user experience point of view is, okay, you're starting a conversation with a brand new contact. So you're starting to talk with someone you've never talked before. This is unusual. This shouldn't happen often. So for that, doesn't cost much. Yeah, just put like a danger sign or whatever in the UI that say, hey, user, 
be careful. We are crossing a trust boundary. You are receiving or talking to this guy for the first time. Please check, be careful with it. So there are some editors that do some of that, like uh, I, the only good feedback I had with those vendors of secure messengers were either German or Swiss German. I won't give them, but they had really good security support and they say, yeah, for sure. Either they somehow did that, like if I say about Swima, they already have like, you know, the contact is red, orange or green, depending on the level of trust, which is nice and easy to, for the end user to see what's happening. I discuss about wire and they say, yeah, we'll change something. And they improved also the UI to make it clear that something unusual is happening. So this is the only fix I was expecting from Signal or WhatsApp or whatever. Uh, but no, don't care. Maybe if you spread the word, they will care more. But it's, it's, it's really a pity. So we're over. So, well, I think you are now convinced that, yeah, well, end-to-end -end encryption is really cool for privacy. But if you are not talking to the good person, yeah, is it really privacy anymore? For me, clearly it's no. Uh, and uh, what I really dislike in WhatsApp, uh, maybe you didn't see it. I uh, know, uh, you, you told it. The first time you have a, con a new conversation, you have like, this yellow sign. But instead of saying, hey, be careful, this is a new conversation, you should take care, they say, your connection, your conversation is now secured end to end. Well, basically, the message says, this is super secure. So you feel safe, but you should not, because this is really a risky situation. And they, they show you this message and say, yeah, now you, you should be safe. So this is really, really bad. Uh, yeah, the security model around contacts is really bad. Uh, so if for whatever reasons you are working on mobile solutions or you are auditing mobile solutions and they have access to contacts, yeah, be careful. Uh, just saying something like that, didn't test, maybe it will be the next round. Next with the latest version of iOS, you can send money via Apple Pay with iMessage. There is no reason why it's not, this attack is not working for, uh, for iOS. So now you can send money just by sending a message. So you imagine what you could do. And there are also banking apps where, you know, you can say, okay, you're at a restaurant, you can, your friend pays and you, you give him 20 bucks just by your message. So you imagine the impact it can have. So, and now everybody is like using contacts because you know, well, WhatsApp and Signal are using it and it's secure. So yeah, let's do like them which is really dangerous. And yeah, well, you have this tool that's open sourced. Uh, and I really, uh, I'm really convinced that there would be targeting attacks via those secure messengers because people really, really feel safe with them. And you know, companies I work for, I see they're changing their process to exchange password or whatever. They say, well, don't send it via email with an encrypted D file or whatever. Just share it via WhatsApp or via Signal. This is far better than SMS. This is far better than internal chat or whatever. Uh, which means that people are educated to trust blindly or secure messengers. And well, you cannot. And yeah, and by design, they cannot filter anything. So I really won't be surprised if at some point you have really big attacks using this vector. And now, yeah, we have... Question time. Yeah, time for questions or time for demos if people want to test live what's happening. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. It's very, again, very informative and interesting topic there for sure. Um, do we have any questions? We still have a bit of time before lunch will kick off, so... Please don't be shy. Anyone? Awesome. Who's going to download the app? <laughs> we can see it, huh? <laughs> sure. um, oh. I can actually understand the answer from the messengers. Uh, that it, I don't think the problem here is the messengers that you allow an application 
read access to your contacts and it's writing, I think it should be the operating system showing you and warning that some third party app has written to your contacts. Even if you secure the end secure messengers, you can still write SMS or iMessage. I think the main problem is not the messengers here. I think the main problem is that a third party application is writing to your contacts. Yeah, we can argue with that. Uh, uh, where maybe I disagree is you, uh, there is this formal security evaluation and the assumptions of the signal protocol, the crypto assumption is that you have an out of band channel to exchange identity, identity keys and they don't implement that. So somehow they are lying to users or using an engine that's not supposed to work under those assumptions. That's my point. But I agree, if mobile OS could do something with us, it would be great also. Cool. A couple of hands. So yeah, keep them up if you have a question for me. Great. Thanks. Um, but Threema, which implements such an out-of-band verification, yeah. um, if you you doesn't force you to use it. You can use it with people you have in your contacts. You get the orange symbol. Yeah. And most of my contacts are orange because they're people who also happen to have Threema, but I haven't met them in a while. You could easily trick me with the same effect. So I don't think um, the, the fact that you don't do out-of-band verification makes this a problem of the messenger application. It's still a problem that somebody has that you've granted somebody right access to your contacts and not of the messenger so i'm not sure that's a good rebuttal to uh, the previous question and comment yeah so then my point would be if you're building a secure messenger is it smart to use contacts if you know that again we can discuss like there are, i think they fixed it in a newer version but when you, you saw, if you saw the dialogue when the app launched it says this app would like access to your contacts. It doesn't say read or write access, it just says access. And that's maybe just saying wants to read and write your contacts would probably raise some red flag. No, yeah. wrong button. Like that would probably raise red flags easier on more users. And that's also an easy fix. Okay. Uh, another question. I spoke with my wife this morning and I know she has a picture and another person with the same name comes to me and starts speaking with me but with a different picture or a default uh, pictogram. The, the, um, I'm pretty sure I can get the avatar from WhatsApp, like the picture, shove it in mine, make it like this is my avatar now. And it's like, I didn't do it because it was a pain in the butt to do it, but you can get the avatar information from WhatsApp. Yeah, it's public info, your wife's pictures. If we have our number, it will show up. Any other questions? Scary, yeah? <laughs> I like it, you're not making it easy for these guys. That's what we like here. Come on, a bit of challenge, it's good. Uh, not a question, but a remark. Uh, first of all, a very great talk. And as usual, also in the physical, physical security area, security is always a combination of technology and behavior or organization. So you can't get around to teach the, the user here. And it's not only on OS level, it's also on application level. Thank you. Yeah, users are the weak link and like, no matter how much you idiot proof your thing, there will always be a bigger idiot. So, uh, since you're attacking some open source messenger, if you uh, plan to design a man in the middle using that technique, because you could use two different Telegram accounts and target both uh, victims with your uh, yeah, so, yeah, we can set it up, so, and then, uh, like we, only, we only showed you half the attack. Yeah. That's basically it. But yeah, it could be, with not a big effort, automated to do a full man in the middle. Uh, so you saw this evil smartphone. You have something cool that's called web.whatsapp.com, which is someone linked to the smartphone. And this website, it's easy to automate, you know, you, uh, well, you, you could, used 
Chrome extensions. Now they are not used anymore, but with a Firefox extension, you could easily do Able in the middle that receive messages, copy paste automatically to the good contact and doing all this forwarding and all that. And this big Chinese manufacturer was really interesting by this kind of feature. There. And maybe they already implemented it. There's, there's also, I found a GitHub repo with like um, an API that can handle WhatsApp traffic entirely in the background. You give it the QR code and it does, you can do it on the server, no problem. So, yes. You can automate it. I didn't have time. I was a graduate student. <laughs> cool. Any final questions before we uh, end officially then here? Great. Okay. Thank you again, guys. Once more, please give it up for them.